This is Lesson 3.3, Apply Blend, Bloom, and Glow. Let's begin with the blend effect. Blending combines two colors to produce a new color at a pixel location. Blending is useful for determining what should be seen in a region where nodes overlap or where two effects apply to a node. You can use blending as an effect or a mode that controls drawing overlapping nodes in a group or container. Here are the properties. Top input is the top input for the blend. Bottom input is the bottom input for the blend. Opacity is a value that's applied to the top input before blending. This value has a range 0 to 1 with a default of 1. And mode determines how pixels are combined. Now the mode property requires a blend mode type with enums that specify the actual blending. And there are lots of enums to choose from, so let's take a look at those now. Blend mode defines pixel combinations that you can use to set the mode property of a blend effect. You can define how the inputs of a blend effect are combined together, and you can specify how a node is blended into the background of a scene. Here's a list of useful enum values to choose from. BlendMode.add adds the color and alpha component pixels for the top and bottom inputs. BlendMode.multiply multiplies the color component pixels for the top and bottom inputs. BlendMode.darken selects the darker component pixels from the two inputs. BlendMode.lighten selects the lighter component pixels from the two inputs. And BlendMode.sourceOver blends the top input over the bottom input. This is the default mode for the blend effect. OK, let's show you a JavaFX program now that uses a blend effect. This is the MyBlend program that creates a blend effect and configures it. Let's compile and run this program and examine its output. You can see that the program displays three colored circles on a light yellow background. Note that secondary colors appear where the circles overlap. At the intersection of the green and red circles, you see yellow. And at the intersection of the red and blue circles, you see violet. These secondary colors were created with a blend effect. Let's show you the code now that creates these circle shapes. We'll also show you how the blend effect was applied to the circles. Three constructors build the red, green, and blue circles. The first constructor builds a circle at 250-150 with radius 50. The color is red with an alpha value of 1.0. The second constructor builds a circle at 200-100 with a radius of 50. The color is green with an alpha value of 0.5. The third constructor builds a circle at 300-100 with radius 50. The color is blue with an alpha value of 0.5. Next, the program builds a blend object and sets its mode to blendMode.add. And here's where we add the red, green, and blue circles to the root scene graph. Finally, the call to set effect applies the blend effect to all the circles. Now what makes the program display secondary colors at the intersection is blendMode.add here. This setting makes the blend add the RGB and alpha values for the top and bottom inputs, which are the two circles. And if the resultant alpha value is greater than 1.0, it's set to 1.0. Note that it's important to make sure the green and blue circles are not opaque in this program. Watch what happens if I make these circles opaque with an alpha value of 1.0. First, I'll change the opacity of the green circle to 1.0 and then the opacity for the blue circle, also to 1.0. When I recompile and run this program, you will now find that there's no secondary colors that are appearing at the intersections, and that's because all the circles are overlapping. So opacities with values less than 1.0 are often necessary to perform blending. It's also important to ensure that the red circle is opaque since it's added first to the scene graph. The next effect is Bloom. This effect makes portions of an image brighter above a given threshold. It's also useful as a glowing effect. Here are the properties. Threshold is the luminosity value of a pixel. 
This is the measure of how bright the pixel looks to the human eye. The range of the threshold property is 0 to 1 with a default of 0.3. A value of 0 means all pixels glow and a maximum value of 1 means no pixels are glowing. The other property is input which is used for chaining effects. Let's show you a JavaFX program now that uses a bloom effect. This is the MyBloom program that creates a bloom effect and configures it. Let's compile and run this program and examine its output. What you see is a yellow text string shown inside a green circle on a light yellow background. Note that the text string appears with a slight glowing effect. Let's show you the JavaFX code now for this program. First, the program creates a circle at 25125 with radius 75 and fill color green. Next, the text constructor creates a text object at 20135 inside the circle with the string bloom. The setters set the text to bold to home of font with a 30 point size and the color of the text string to yellow. The default constructor creates the bloom effect and this setter sets the threshold property to 0.5. And here's where we apply the bloom effect to the text and add the circle and text objects to the root scene graph. Now let's modify this program and show you a little bit more about the bloom effect. First, I'll increase the threshold to 1.0. When I recompile and run this program, you're now going to see a different result. In fact, you'll see that the glow effect has disappeared because no pixels glow at this threshold level. Let's decrease the threshold level to 0.3 now. When I recompile and run this program, you'll now see that the slightly more glow has been applied to the text. Now remember, that invoking set effect with a group object applies the effect to all the nodes in the group. Watch what happens when I call set effect here with root instead of text. When I recompile and run this program, you'll now see that the bloom effect has been applied to both the yellow text string and the green circle. The last effect in this lesson is glow. A glow effect is similar to bloom, except that the controlling property is different and works in the reverse order. In other words, the more glow you apply, the brighter the pixels appear. Here are the properties. Level is the intensity of the glow effect. Again, this is a measure of how bright the pixel looks to the human eye. The range for the level property is 0 to 1 with a default of 0.3. Now with level, a value of 0 means no pixels glow, and a maximum value of 1 means all pixels glow. The other property is input, which is used for chaining effects. Let's show you a JavaFX program now that uses a glow effect. This is the MyGlow program that creates a glow effect and configures it. Let's compile and run this program and examine its output. What you see is a yellow text string shown inside a green circle on a light yellow background. Note that the text string appears with a glowing effect. Let's show you the JavaFX code for this program now. First, the program creates a circle at 25125 with radius 75 and fill color green. Next, the text constructor creates the text object at 205135 inside the circle with the string glow. The setters set the text to bold to home of font with a 30 point size and the color of the text string to yellow. The default constructor creates the glow effect and this setter sets the level property to 0.8. And here's where we apply the glow effect to the text and add the circle and text objects to the root scene graph. Let's modify this program now and show you more about the glow effect. First, I'll set the level property to zero. When I recompile and run the program, you see that the glow effect has disappeared because no pixels glow at a zero level value. Let's increase the level now to 1.0, the maximum value. 
When I recompile and run this program, you see that a little more glow has been applied to the text. And last, I'll modify the call to set effect and apply the glow effect to the root. When I recompile and run this program, you see the glow effect has been applied to both the yellow text string and green circle.